The SPCA have been called to a property in West Auckland where many sheep have been massacred. Under cover of darkness, it appears two marauding dogs have savaged their way through this unsuspecting flock. They've obviously spent maybe the night chasing all the sheep around. Obviously, they've destroyed quite a few. Bet's just going through and checking. And that one over there's lost both its ears. Yes, it's absolutely horrendous. The culprits have left many badly injured sheep in need of urgent medical attention. A lot cannot be saved. In the aftermath of the slaughter, the local vet and other volunteers have arrived to help. We work quite closely with Waitakere Animal Welfare. I do because it's west as part of my area. So we always call each other for a, for a hand. And something like this, we just need to call everybody in to help round up the sheep. It's, we just have to pull together. It's evident the dogs were well fed and only in it for the chase and catch. If they'd been hungry, they'd have devoured their targets. Instead, they maimed and injured their prey. I was just on a phone call on my cell phone this morning. About nine o'clock, I suppose it was. And uh, so I came straight here. I had a job to go to, a docking job. So I just came straight here. And uh, there was just sheep lying everywhere, dead and wounded. And it just wasn't a pretty sight. Most of the sheep will never recover from their injuries. Graham is left with the mess, the cost, and his anger at the irresponsible dog owners who have unwittingly allowed this to happen. It's not the dog's fault, it's the owner's fault for letting the dogs off, you know, at night. And it's going to cost me heaps. As a result of the attack, some lambs were separated from their mothers and now lack crucial nutrition. But he's weak, but he probably hasn't fed in the last 12 hours, so okay. maybe with the feed. Some antibiotics and some warmth and okay. disinfectant, we could, we give, could give them a go. So. Remarkably, there is some good news. Karen has spotted one of the surviving ewes calling for her lamb. She's hopeful of a successful reunion. Oh, look! <laughs> you can't get much better than that. Always a silver lining, huh? Oh. Animal welfare officer Tom Dydovich has been called in to assess the situation and help find the dogs responsible. There's the possibility the dogs will come back because they've already been here once, they've had good sport. If they're still wandering loose and the owners haven't woken up to that fact, then they could come back. So we would look at sighting uh, a couple of dog traps with Baton on the site here. Um, we might have somebody patrolling the area. The stock owner would maybe be sitting out, group the stock together in a place of safety and keep an eye on them tonight. And during the day, we're just going to be following through with inquiries to try and match up the dogs responsible. Back at the village, the SPCA is taking custody of a new temporary resident. A ferret was found roaming unsupervised in the suburbs and has been picked up by education officer Ali Ryan. Abandoned, possibly ferret. Nice. St John's area. Very friendly, though. Great. She was um, phoned in by a member of the public last night as a stray that had turned up on their property, which they'd actually found underneath their house, and they've asked the neighbours and um, no one knows where it would have come from, and she's lovely. She's, she's very friendly, so there's a huge possibility that she is owned. She may be an animal lover, but colleague Vicky Border is definitely not keen on ferrets. Yuck. They're an unfortunate animal that um, haven't quite fitted into society as neatly as some of the other domesticated animals, being that they are so destructive on the wildlife. First time that I've ever touched one of these. <laughs> Ferrets were once fashionable as pets, but in recent years they've become the scourge of environmentalists. They are now officially regarded as pests in New Zealand, and owners need a permit to keep them. They were all a rage at one stage, but unfortunately as things come and go, um, we were finding them being abandoned in car parks, hutch and all, which is a huge issue. Just the same as people would abandon rabbits and, and so on, ferrets were in that same class. So it may not be uh, such a good thing this being caught. Crazy. Now I've got to figure out what to do with it. I'm not a rodent person. The prospects for this pest don't look good, and it's soon to become a matter of life or death. Last week, a Sharpe Cross puppy was brought in from a South Auckland street. A poorly executed home docking had almost proved fatal. After surgery, the dog fully recovered and is now up for adoption. 
We've had only a few people look at her since she's uh, she's been here, and um, because of her breed, we, we've been pretty careful as to who um, who adopts her. Uh, just because the, the Sharpe, their temperament, they can tend to be a little bit dominant, um, and they they can, if allowed to be, you know, be a little bit aggressive with with other dogs. And so we want her to go to a home where people understand that. The only people that we've had look at her. Um, to look at her and think she's cute and that's that's as much of their knowledge of, of dogs and we really need someone that you know that knows a little bit about dogs and is, is experienced. Rachel's hoping that person can be found in the Hamilton region. Right now the Waikato SPCA are very short of puppies for adoption so this dog and a few others are making a trip south today. Inspector Sue Bourdais is taking the precious cargo to meet up with Waikato Inspector Jenny Greener. Hiya! <laughs> The owner tried to dock her tail, um, kind of a little bit further down, and mm -hmm. did a really, really bad job of it. And um, we removed her from the property and, yep. and did the job properly. And she's got a little brother as well, hasn't she? She's got a little brother that's still at work, and she's just gorgeous. Take you for a nice ride back to Hamilton, eh, sweetheart? Good girl. With the puppies safely transferred, Sue's Waikato colleague has asked her to help with a poultry problem nearby. Um, there's a chicken that's, um, that you spotted this morning, didn't mm, you? That's, somebody came um, by while I was waiting for you and said that a chicken had been dumped in the area and it's been running in between the trees over there, so we're going to go and try and catch excellent. it and rescue it. Never one to turn down a challenge, Sue is totally up for a wild chicken chase. OK. Where is it? She's lying down, might be able to get her straight away. She was just in there. Almost cornered, but not quite. Oh, there she is. <laughs> no one said it would be easy. <laughs> Damn. Oh. She's in the, under this one now. Pack you go around, around that way. Skirts. <laughs> it's all about net technique, and Sue's been practicing. <laughs> yeah, shot. Hey, 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 sweetie, it's all right, it's all right. Crikey! All right. It's all right. Oh, good lordy. Crikey, that's a feisty chicken. Oh, very. I'm just going to put a towel over her because she's, right, she's pretty stressed and it just might calm her down a little bit. It's all right. OK. It's one feisty chicken. <laughs> With the poultry pacified and the puppies heading south, it's back to business as usual for the SBCA. A farm in Swanson has again been the target of dog attacks that savaged sheep there the previous day. Poor girl. Classic dog attack around the throat. All these fresh puncture wounds. Just major, major holes. It's a bit waste. Graham Mooney and Karina Mules find themselves in the same cruel predicament they faced 24 hours earlier. We've shot the ones who were too sick to survive, so we've, and some of them died, you know, from their wounds. So it's been how many? 30, 30? 35. Animal control have set traps, but. They obviously didn't work and they came back last night. So out of 100, we've got 21 healthy sheep and the rest are either dead or sick. Having lost thousands of dollars worth of stock, they're determined to find the dogs responsible. If your property is not fenced and you do not have a dog run or anything like that, then don't buy a dog because your dog will not stay in the property and it will go out scavenging at night time and end up at farms like this ripping all our sheep's throats out and leaving a great big massacre for us to clean up. It's just not fair. I mean, those people out there know who those dogs are because they would have come home and they would have been covered in blood. You know, it just, just annoys me. It brasses me off. Despite wide publicity, nobody has come forward with information Sorry. and oh, Graham is worried about the bigger picture. The only way we're going to stop them is with a, with a bullet, isn't it? The next thing, they're going to be into kids, these dogs. You know, if we take all the sheep out of here, they're going to be into kids. It's time to round up the remaining sheep. Because the traps failed last night, animal welfare officers plan around-the-clock surveillance. We've moved the 
sheep into here as live bait basically and the, the guys are going to pull their cars up fairly close to the, to the sheep and hopefully the dog's going to come back and they'll get a good shot at them. I feel a bit sorry for them left in here as live bait but everyone's watching them so they should be okay. Fingers crossed tonight tonight, the boys devil. here they'll um, hopefully get them. So we get the devils here. Yeah. Yeah, no. While the dock puppy has found its way to the Waikato, Inspector Karen Lowndes next job is to pay a visit to the puppy's previous owner. The owner has um, admitted to me obviously that he did it, he's done it all his life, he was brought up on a farm. Um, I've had an in-depth conversation with him now, explained to him the reasons why he's not to do it and shown him um, the puppies that with the tails infected. So hopefully that's got um, through to him and he won't be doing it again. The owner is 65 and seriously ill, so we've decided not to prosecute. We would usually definitely prosecute, but we decided against it. So I'm here today just to give him a written warning, which will explain to him if he does do it again, we will have no choice but to prosecute him. Hi. Is Mr. here? Are you Mr. You are. Karen from the SPCA. I spoke to you on the phone about your puppies. Okay. I believe you've moved up north. Well, I'm moving up there. You're moving up north. OK, how's that Sharpe of yours? It's good. It's good? And so you're not going to do this tail docking again, are you? Well, I will if it's my dogs up north, then. Got nothing to do with you people, what I do with my dogs. OK, well, then, we're gonna, okay, well, then if you're going to go down this line, we're going to have to start again, I'm afraid. And because you've just admitted that, it changes the whole circumstances of where I've come today to give you a written warning. And I, to be honest, I find it extremely upsetting. We had a good conversation on the phone. I told you, if you didn't relinquish the rights to your puppies and listen to what I had to say about you docking them, I would have no choice but to prosecute you. I've come here today to give you a written warning, which tells, me, tells you, if I catch you doing it again, I will prosecute you. And you tell me today you will. You will. If you what? catch me, you say. And I will, there's this PCA's up there. So, well, that, no, I've already caught it's you, fine. so I don't need to catch you again. I can retract this written warning and I'll put it into a prosecution. And you simply will get a summons to go to court and we'll let a judge decide whether you broke the law or not. That one that you put the band around, was the tail was so badly infected, we almost had to put the puppy to sleep because of what you did. I don't know that, eh? I you saw, I'll show you a vet report. I could have taken it to my own vet. But you didn't, and that's no, the whole because point. I was in hospital, I explained it to you. Karen yes, maintains her focus for animal welfare, even though the man has refused to cooperate in the future. He wasn't the one that did it, he was in hospital. It was done by somebody no, else. I've got it in my notebook. Um, well, when it? I spoke originally, he, he said I did it. It's all. Yeah, no, he didn't. Because it's my dog. Yeah, he didn't actually put it on, on. he didn't actually do it because he was in hospital. Hospital. Somebody else that put um, somebody else that put, put the um, put it on. Who was on that? Somebody puppy. else. Um, well, this is who that was here. I don't know about that. I've got in my notebook that he did it. He said he did it. So I mean, this is new stuff that's coming out. Are you happy to give over your forwarding um, address and your phone number, so at least we can discuss this further? The alleged offender is choosing to ignore Karen's advice and naturally doesn't okay. want the SPCA on his case. Well, that was a disaster. <sighs> Unfortunately, he admitted to me that he'd be quite happy to carry on docking his puppy's tails. So, um, I've brought back the written warning and I'll have to continue with the prosecution. Which is highly disappointing. I thought we'd um, had, you know, long conversations and he understood entirely where I was coming from, but obviously not. So, very frustrating. An animal with an uncertain future is this ferret that's recently arrived at the SPCA. Ferrets are now on the dock pest hit list, but this one has staff nurse Rocky Moses limbering up in her corner. She's had pet ferrets before and can see their positive attributes. She's beautiful. Hello. Well, it's been um, a couple of years since we've had a, a ferret here, so we're sort of uh, wondering what we need to do with her now. Nobody here really likes ferrets um, because they bite. What I've been taught um, when I first had my ferrets is that if you hold them up like this and they're pretty relaxed, if they're not struggling, then they're pretty tame ferrets. Um, and she doesn't seem to be struggling. Um, you can do anything with them, twist them, turn them upside down, bend them in half. And they're, if they're really tame, they won't try and bite you or anything. Yeah.
Animal manager Rachel Green makes the official call to seal the life or death fate of the ferret. It's Rachel here from the Auckland SPCA. Just wanted to confirm uh, the standing of ferrets. The ban was discussed on them uh, in 2002. Can you tell me if that's actually come into effect? Rocky can't help okay. taking a personal okay. interest. I mean, if the legislation says that they can't, you know, they can't be rehomed or uh, or anything like that, um, no, yeah, okay, no, that's great. You've answered my question. Thank you. Bye. There we go then. Um, no, they cannot be rehomed. <gasps> she actually suggested that we put it down now. And I said, well, under our act, we have to hold it seven days to try and locate an owner. Um, and she said, well, it's fair enough. If an owner comes forward, I mean, they're allowed to own a ferret, but they have to live out, basically live out their natural lives and then they're not allowed to get any more. Not happy, but there are people out there that don't actually look after them. So it ruins it for everybody else. In the early hours of the morning, animal welfare officers are staking out the farm where sheep were viciously killed by dogs on the previous two nights. What we're doing is we've got sheep in a pen set up at the, the base of a, a little bit of a hill. Um, so we've got a safe firing shot. The idea is we're sitting tight in the darkness and, and quiet and uh, hoping that the, the dog's going to turn up while we're here. On the first stakeout night it rained and the dogs failed to show. Neither did the dogs return any of the nights the following week and no dog owners came forward to confess their dogs may have been involved. As a result of the attacks, the farmer was left with only four sheep from the flock of 120. Being officially defined as a pest, this stray ferret's on death row, unless an owner is quickly found. Confirmed ferret lover Rocky Moses miraculously finds the owner, but identification becomes an issue. The only reason we ask you to bring a photo in is so if she's somebody else's ferret, then you're not taking somebody else's ferret home and then that person rings up and we've given it to you. The woman claims her ferret has been desexed. This is now a requirement of the Department of Conservation to ensure the ferret population is contained and eventually eradicated, so resident vet Jody must confirm it. Hey, You're three whole years old. She said they shouldn't be in season now. Ow! She's naughty! Don't do that to me! Yeah, I think she's been desexed. I think cool. I can see it right here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, thank you very much. She has officially been desexed at some point in her life. Either that or she's had abdominal surgery and, well, we're pooled. Surgery scar identified, it appears this little ferret has slipped through the Department of Conservation's net and will live out its natural life with its owner. At the Hamilton SPCA, our heroic survivor of that tail-docking ordeal may have already found a new owner. What's her name? Her name's Pooh Bear. <laughs> 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 name I for a puppy. You've you, darling. You are gorgeous, aren't you? What do you think about her, Peg? I think she's gorgeous. <laughs> I knew I would. <laughs> I knew I would. She seems to be very confident, though. She does, doesn't she? Trusting. Yeah, I think she's had an awful lot of handling since she's been here. That's yes. probably why. Yes. Yes. I want a dog that I can give a cuddle to. Mm. Yep. Yeah. She fits the bill. She does, doesn't she? <laughs> she's had a really rugged time. Mm. I mean, I think, you know, her, her sort of... In her little life, she's gone through a hell of a lot and she got badly infected, as I told you, with her tail. Mm. I think this one's nature. It's obviously so warm and friendly. I'm a bit smitten, in fact, a lot smitten. <laughs> there, did you hear mm. that, gorgeous girl? You might just change your name because I'm going to be so embarrassed shouting poo. <laughs> I am. Pig's recovering from the recent loss of her German Shepherd Pointer, Connie. My dog died three weeks ago. Old age. We think she got cancer. We had three weeks of not eating much and just slowing up. And she lost a lot of weight. But I didn't want to make the decision too quickly in case it was something passing. But we came to the conclusion, the vet and I, that it was cancer. Be 
people say to me, oh, you wouldn't have another, would you? Meaning at, at my extreme old age. And I say, yes, I would. Most definitely have another. Because I have a good idea that my daughter would take it on if I pop my clogs. Wouldn't she? A few days later, the dog found a home with Pig and got a new good name, girl. Kelly. What a good girl. So this is Kelly now? This is Kelly, yeah. Right, Kelly, well, I think you've settled in quite well, so I'm going to love you and leave you, and we'll come back soon to check on how you're doing. There's a good girl. So I think we'll have lots of fun. <laughs>